Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about master's versus doctorate's degrees, what the difference is, why I chose a doctorate's degree, and what is going to be required in the future going forward. So first of all, let's talk about the differences. A master's versus a doctorate degree, there is a difference in price obviously, which is the first thing people usually think about. And I did a lot of research when I was applying to schools and found that there were a lot of cheap master's programs that were less expensive than doctorate programs, but I also found that there were a lot of master's programs at private schools and things like that that were just as or more expensive as doctorate programs. So price really varies depending on area, school, and things of that nature. So you really just have to consider all the factors. I don't think price is a good reason on its own to choose one or the other. The second thing I'm going to talk about is clinical requirements because a lot of people wonder if master's prepared CRNAs have the same clinical requirements as doctorate prepared CRNAs. And yes, they absolutely do. We're all required to have the same amount of hours, the same amount of cases. Everything is the same in that area. So neither degree is lacking clinically. We come out prepared clinically the same. Duration of program is also a huge factor when people are making their decision. Master's programs tend to be 24 to 28 months in duration. Doctorate's programs are 36 months. So you're looking at two to two and a half years versus three years. Now, I will say I researched both programs extensively and I only found four or five master's programs that were actually 24 months. Most of them are closer to 28 months. So on average, you're looking at an eight month difference between the two. So it's not a huge time difference. It's usually not an entire year, but there is a time difference there. So that is a factor for a lot of people who are trying to finish school as quickly as possible. Academically, the differences are in research primarily. So in our doctorate program, we do kind of a dissertation. We defend our research at the end. We do a huge presentation. We're researching for about a year before we present and finish everything. In a master's program, now I'm not in a master's program, so I'm speaking off friends that I spoke to who are in a master's program. This isn't facts. I don't have the curriculum from a master's program when I'm saying this. So if I'm wrong and you're in a master's program and you do something different, please correct me. But typically in a master's program, there's less of a research component. They do do research, but it's more of evidence-based research versus an entire top to bottom research project where you're creating your own groups, doing your own studies and things like that. So from what I understand, the research component is much different. And that makes sense because they have to finish the same amount of hours as us squeezed into two years and we have three years to do that. So we have more time for research because we can spread our clinicals out a little bit more than they can. Now I'll talk about why I chose to get a doctorate degree. And the number one reason I'm going to be completely honest is because I don't ever want to go to school again when I'm done with this degree. So when I was going back to school and applying, I said, I want to go to school. I want to get it over with. Even if it takes a little bit longer, I want a terminal degree and I never want to go back again. So naturally I chose a doctorate degree because once I finish this, I don't need to go back to school. If they do change regulations in the future, I'll already have my doctorate degree and I'll never have to go back. The time commitment was a little bit of a factor, but really give me giving up eight more months wasn't a huge deal to me. If I were to add eight months on right now and just go ahead and get my doctorate, that saves me a lot of time because if I go back later and try to go from master's to doctorate while I'm working, typically that takes one to two years. So it actually takes longer. I know it's more convenient and you're working and getting paid while you're doing that. But for me, I'd rather just sacrifice right now and do the kind of shorter route and get it all over with before I'm done and working and not wanting to go back. And the price wasn't a huge factor for me only because some of the master's programs that I was looking to apply to were around or about the same price as my doctorate program. So really, if I'm gonna pay almost the same amount anyway, I'd rather just get the higher degree and never have to go back. I also wanted to keep my options open for the future in case I wanna go into research or teaching or administration or anything like that. Honestly, I do not see myself doing of any of that ever, but I wanted to keep the options open because people change and you never know if I might get interested in doing research or something like that down the line. What I do see myself doing is independent practice as in starting my own practice or maybe having some sort of clinic. So I wanted to have a doctorate's degree in case in the future that's required of me to do that and go on that venture because I don't want any doors to not be open for me just because I have a master's degree and not a doctorate. Okay, so now that we've talked about that, I'm gonna talk about the COA, the Council on Accreditation and what their new rules are. They're not really new, I guess, they're newish. Anyway, I'm gonna talk about what they're implementing, how they've been implementing it over the past few years and how they will implement it in the future. It's gonna affect SRNAs that are applying right now, future SRNAs. It's not gonna affect me or SRNAs that are currently in a program and it shouldn't affect 
actual CRNAs who are already practicing. Okay, so the Council on Accreditation is who is in charge of accrediting schools, obviously CRNA schools. Now they decided that they want all CRNAs to be doctorate prepared, and they've been implementing this over the past five years, and it'll be going over the next five years. So it'll be a 10 year period of having all this stuff implemented. And they started out in 2015 by not accrediting any new master's program. So what that means is if you wanted to start a CRNA school in 2015 or after that, you would have to start a doctorate CRNA school. They weren't gonna approve any new master's programs. So that leads to the next rule, which is January 1st, 2022, any Students accepted into a CRNA program must be accepted into a doctorate program. No more students will be accepted into master's programs. So keep that in mind when you're applying and looking at your timeline. If you're just now graduating as a nurse or you're graduating soon, by the time you get to CRNA school, you're probably going to have to have a doctorate program. Because say you graduate this May, which is 2019, you work for a year or two and then you apply to CRNA school, by that time it's gonna be 2022 or almost 2022. So you're just gonna to have to go ahead and get your doctorate's degree. Now, the reason that they said that all students entering January 1st, 2022 or after have to be in a doctorate's program is because if you're entering the nurse anesthesia field as a CRNA in 2025, you have to be doctorate prepared. If you're already a CRNA, this doesn't apply, but if you're new incoming, doctorate's degree is required. So really they've been making these changes over time to make it easier on schools to transition. A lot of schools chose to transition earlier than they needed to. A lot of schools that were traditionally master's programs are now doctorate's programs, and all the other schools are currently transitioning will be in the next year or two. So this does impact people who wanna teach because if you wanna teach, you have to have your doctorates to teach doctorate students. So if you have your master's, there's gonna be no programs for you to teach at. So you're gonna have to go back to get your doctorate degree. So that's it for this video. I'm gonna wrap it up now. I hope that helped clarify some things for you. I got some requests for this video and I got a message on Instagram recently from somebody who was requesting that I make this video and I thought it was an awesome suggestion so I decided to go for it. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you learned some stuff. I hope you liked it and if you did give it a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe if you want to keep following me on my CRNA school and life journey because this channel is kind of about everything and as always I hope you guys have a really great week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.